Step number three, determining the transaction price. Again, guys, I choose to only highlight a few words in my paragraphs. Remember, this is the price that the entity expect to receive. Therefore, guys, extremely important. Ladies, think about our Woolies purchase. We like to return the clothes. Okay, therefore, the entity has to provide that most probably they are going to return our clothes. Now, remember, excluding amounts collected on behalf of third parties. And you will remember that we have discussed that there is four important aspects. Now, you will identify in paragraph 4.8 that they have A to E. We have included this as one, our variable consideration, two, the existence of significant financing component, three, our non-cash consideration, and four, our consideration payable to a customer. Now guys, again, close your eyes. Let's talk about our variable consideration. You will remember we had a diagram. The first question was, is there variable consideration? If the answer is yes, you will remember we have to estimate the price. And there's two methods that we can use. Now we have a second question. What is that question? Now guys, you are going to think that it's easy for you, Bianca. You have your revision sheet in front of you. Yeah, you also have it in front of you. But you now need to use the sound study. But I can promise you, up till now, I did not view my revision sheet. I've been writing this literally from our lectures, from my preparation, and so forth. Now, the second question, remember, this should be highly probable that we will not reverse that revenue. Okay. You will remember we've indicated that we will have to determine the transaction price minus the portion that we will reverse. And this will be our transaction price. Then you will remember as part of our variable consideration, we have touched on, let me just call this A, now let's do this B, we've touched on refund liabilities, which were important to us. Then there was something about returning goods being defective, not defective. Let's call this C. This was certain contracts can allow the customer to return the goods and we will have to recognize a right of return asset. Now, this is what I want to indicate to you. When you work through IFRS 15, think about your lecture notes, your revision sheet. You have it available in front of you, but this is the time that you can use to study the principles. Then a financing component. Remember, we had the picture where we have our customer, we have our entity, and it can benefit either of these two, but it should benefit significantly. Now, what is significant? Material, and there is a relief clause, guys. You remember this one? What is the relief clause? If the period is less than one year between our transaction date and our payment date, we do not have to calculate the present value. Non-cash considerations, to remember, at fair value, and then consideration payable to a customer. Now, this can be a little bit interesting, guys. For this one, we have the three questions. The what, the how, and the when. Now, I'm going to be honest, I cannot remember all of the details of these three, but luckily I do have my revision sheet with me 
and I do have my standard. And the standard indicates to me that this is included in paragraph 70 to 72. Now guys, this is what I want to show you. I know that you will not be able to remember 100% everything on your revision sheets. But you have your standard and your standard is there to help you. Now let's quickly have a look at how I have highlighted variable considerations. This was my first important aspect. Now guys, I want you to please ensure that you work through this. You will identify this is our expected value method and our most likely amount and they have included the questions in here as well the two questions then refund liabilities well guys for me i can remember this a refund liability it's a liability that meets our conceptual framework therefore i have to ensure that i measure this at the amount that we do expect to pay back to our customer but guys, I do recommend that you use a few minutes and briefly scan through these paragraphs, please. Two, existence of our significant finance component. Well, I'm pretty sure that you do remember this, but if you do not, please scan through your paragraphs and highlight the relevant words. Non-cash considerations at fair value. If our fair value is not available, we can use our standalone selling price. You will remember this. Consideration payable to a customer. Now, this is the important one that we need to remember. We, we have included the what, how, and when. Now, guys, you can work through this. And decide how do you want to highlight these paragraphs remember we have indicated that the what this can normally be coupons vouchers and so forth therefore that is our what paragraph when paragraph 71 if the consideration payable to a customer is a payment for a distinct good or service from the customer then an entity shall account for the purchase of the good or service in the same way that it accounts for other purchases from suppliers. If the amount of consideration payable to the customer exceeds the fair value of the distinct good or service that the entity receives from the customer, then the entity shall account for the excess as a reduction of the transaction price. Now, when you read this in your test or in your exam, then you can think about the possibilities. Remember, it can either be not distinct good or service or it can be a distinct good or service. Then, if the entity cannot reasonably estimate the fair value, it shall account for all of the consideration payable as a reduction of the transaction price. Accordingly, if consideration payable to a customer is accounted for as a reduction in the transaction price, an entity shall recognize a reduction of revenue when, now this is our when, at the later of either when they recognize revenue for the transfer of the related goods or services, or when the entity pays or promises to pay the consideration. Now guys, you see, again, Briefly scan through the paragraph, meaning scan, read through the paragraph, highlight the important words. Now, our step four. Allocating the transaction price to the performance obligation. We have indicated that this should be based on our standalone selling price. And we may only do this once the performance obligation are satisfied. I've chosen to only highlight my standalone selling price. I already know that my standalone selling price is in accordance with IFRS 13. This is my definition. Again, guys, I've chosen to only highlight the important words that there should be best evidence, observable, similar circumstances, and similar type of customer. Remember, we had methods for estimating 
the standalone selling price and this will be my adjusted market assessment approach the expected cost plus a margin approach and then the residual approach now allocation of discount you will remember we had the example where we had three products one two and three they had different transaction prices the total ended to be six thousand and our transaction price as per our contract was five thousand and we've determined that there is a thousand rand discount that we need to allocate and we've indicated that this shall be allocated proportionally to the performance obligations except guys if there is evidence that it should only be allocated to one now when we look at our allocation of variable consideration if we can identify that the variable consideration is linked to one performance obligation that is easy if not they indicate to us we need to allocate in terms of paragraph 73 to 83 now guys remember this is proportionally as per our allocation of discount then changes in the transaction price we had an example in our notes where we have indicated that you will allocate this on the same basis as at contract inception we've indicated that if at contract inception we have allocated our transaction price to our assets 20 20 40 and 20 and now we identify that there's an increase in our transaction price of 200 we will allocate this on the same basis as per our at contract inception contract costs guys i'm pretty sure that you know this by now remember our picture this is my contract incremental and costs to fulfill the contract then paragraph 101 in payment loss now i'm going to ask you to try and remember when there is assets or a paragraph relating to assets to remember to briefly identify impairment loss rules or principles of that standard you will identify in tests that they do like to ask something about impairments now again guys do not spend hours and hours on this just know that if there is such a question that you have highlighted this in your standard they indicate to us an entity shall recognize an impairment loss in profit or loss to the extent that the carrying amount of an asset recognized in accordance with paragraph 91 or 95 now guys we can quickly have a look at these two paragraphs exceed now they indicate to us that if the carrying amount exceeds the remaining amount of consideration that the entity expects to receive in exchange for the goods or services to which the asset relates less the costs that relate directly to providing those goods or services and that have not been recognized as an expense see paragraph 97 now let's just quickly have a look at paragraph 91 or 95 Nine one guys, this is our contract costs. Nine five contract costs, and nine seven the costs that relate directly to a contract. Now, what they're indicating to us here is that an entity shall recognize an impairment loss when the carrying amount of an asset. Now, this is the asset relating to our contract costs. now this is our contract costs remember that you will capitalize them therefore they will be an asset now they indicate to us if our carrying amount 
exceeds the remaining amount of our consideration that the entity expects to receive in exchange for the good or services to which the asset relates to, less the costs. Now guys, the costs providing those goods or services and that have not been recognized as an expense. Okay, so then you know that there is an impairment. But what I want to tell you is that you have to remember, if we have recognized a refund liability, or we have recognized a right of return asset, you need to remember that the standard indicates to us that at each year end, we need to measure these amounts and ensure that they are correct. Therefore, guys, you will have to remeasure them. Please remember this and please ensure that this is on your revision page. Now, our presentation, I did not go into detail with us. I'm pretty sure that you are familiar with your contract liability, contract asset receivable. Our disclosure. Now, this is an interesting one. There's quite a lot of information included. You will have to disclose all of the qualitative and quantitative information about contracts with customers, significant judgments, and assets recognized from the cost to obtain or fulfill the contract. Now, this will be your contract costs. Now, what I've done, guys, and again, please try not to spend too much time on this, you can get very carried away with highlighting your standards, as I have mentioned before. I'm using three colors. I've got green, blue, and this light pinkish color. I've literally only highlighted my heading, contract with customers. I need to disclose the following information unless the amounts are presented separately in the statement of comprehensive income in accordance with other standards. Revenue, impairment, losses, contract balances, opening, closing, and so forth. Explanations if there's significant changes. Performance obligations, when significant payment terms, nature of goods or services, and so forth. Guys, I'm not going to read through each paragraph with you. We do not have time for that. You will have to do that, please. Now, our practical expedient. The number two, if there is significant judgments, timing, transaction price, methods, explanations, and so forth. Number three, assets recognized from the costs to obtain or fulfill the contract. You need to describe them and disclose them. Okay. So guys, this is then our Appendix A and our definitions. Now, if I'm you, I will include a flag but I'm not going to spend too much time on highlighting this page. But my assumption is that you do know these definitions by watching the lecture, by studying your revision pages.